Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I am in such a great mood today. It is currently 6.36 p.m. on this beautiful Monday evening. It is blue skies, there's not a cloud in the sky. It's like 75 degrees outside, it's so nice. And um, I'm really excited because my little literature group that started during the lockdown, um, over a year ago, we've read two books now. We've gone through two entire uh, recovery books. And tonight, we're starting the third one. So I love my little group that I have. And um, we've just really bonded through all of this. And it's been one of the positives that has come out of all of that. Um, you know, building a new support system and getting to know some people that I didn't know very well before. And it's just been really cool. So um, I'm really excited about that. And getting to hear everybody's perspectives about the literature that we read in recovery. And it's just been really, really cool. And so tonight we're going on um, a new journey, a new adventure with a different book, and I'm really excited about that. So, all right, uh, I brought the two Melody Beatty books with me, and um, I have this one already turned to April 26th, so let's get right into this. April 26th, change is in the air. Just as the world around us changes and, and just as the world around us changes and evolves, so do the circumstances and situations in our lives. We live in a universe that is alive, vibrant, and constantly evolving. Change is the way nature, the universe, and the divine move us through each period of our lives and into destiny. We are led to our next lesson, our next adventure. There's no need to deny change, to fear it, or, to fight, against, or fight against it. There's no need to deny change, to fear it, or fight against it. Change is inevitable. Just as the earth is constant motion and transformation, so are we. Take your place in the universal dance, the universal rhythm. Allow change to happen. Work with it as your life unfolds. Sometimes change comes in one smashing moment like a volcanic eruption. Other times it happens more slowly, the way the winds and rain sculpt bridges out of canyons. Learn to trust your body, its signs, signals, warnings, and excited proclamations. We let the gathering clouds warn us of impending storms, and we learn to study and predict tremors in the earth. In much the same way, our body can function as a barometer for our soul and its place in a constantly changing and evolving universe. You are open now, more sensitive than you've been before. You are open now, more sensitive than you've been before. Change is coming. It's here. You can feel it in the air. You can feel it in yourself. Thank your body for helping you. Thank the universe for what it is about to do. Thank your un thank thank the <laughs> I can't speak today. I don't know what is wrong. Thank your body for helping you. Thank the universe for what it is about to do. Then thank God because change will bring you closer to love. Um, wow, really powerful meditation. You know, I, I hear people say a lot like I don't like change or I don't like, you know, I don't want to change or whatever, you know. And, um, and I think this concept of change is interesting because whether we like it or not, change occurs, you know. And I guess it's kind of something that I didn't really realize for a long time. I thought like change was living in the same place or keeping the same haircut or doing the same job or keeping the same people around you, you know, and that that was like not changing, you know. And so I would say I don't like change. Like I'm a creature of comfort, right, because I didn't want to like try new things or I didn't want to do things that were outside of my comfort level or I didn't want to do things that made me uncomfortable you know as far as like I don't know like I was somebody that didn't like to try new things in the past I wasn't spontaneous and and I really think that it's a result of a lot of my social anxiety as well that when I would get invited to do new things, I'd be like, oh, thank you for inviting me, but now I'm good, you know? And, um, and people stopped asking me. And so I just, after a while, I stopped getting included in those things, you know, which was sad. Today, I have realized, really I would say in the last five or six years, that change is inevitable. That even if you say, I'm not somebody that likes change, change is gonna happen anyway, you know? People are gonna come, people are gonna go, people are gonna pass away, and um, the conditions of our lives are gonna change. And uh, all we really can control is our part in all of that and who we are, you know? We can stand our ground and never leave the four walls that we've lived in our entire life, but you know, at the end of the day, I realized today that I, um, I'm on this earth to live and to experience life and to experience new things and 
and go see new places and meet new people and, and have new friendships and try new food, you know, and watch new movies that I've never watched before. And if I didn't, like, how boring would life be, you know, if we just did the same thing over and over and over and over again? And, um, and that's just me. That's just me. I try to, you know, do new things and try new foods and new music and whatever because I don't know that right around the corner might be something that I really love, you know? And so um, I've really learned to kind of adapt to change over time. And now it's like, you know, it, it all comes from actually the Melody Beatty. If you go back to when I was talking about uh, the, the visual imagery meditations that she does where she's talking about floating down the river of life. It's very much that for me. It's very much like not resisting, you know, change or what's going to come our way and just floating down the river of life and being like, okay, well, this happened and that happened and what now, you know, and what now? Um, and that's where I live today. Um, I, I still am not somebody that, you know, like every six months or a year picks up and moves somewhere new. I have friends of mine that are very much like that. And, you know, from the outside looking in, they live uh, very exciting lives and they're always on the go and they're always traveling, you know, and stuff. But at the same time, like for me, like there's still a part of me that's, a, you know, a creature of comfort that I like to keep some things the same. And then that's safe for me, you know, then that that's safe for me, that social anxiety part of me that I have to, you know, be aware of as well because it's not going to just go away overnight but it's a good meditation it's a good meditation all right let's go to the language of letting go for april 26th oh i turned right to it that was weird Ooh, resisting negativity this is a good one resisting negativity april 26th some people are carriers of negativity they are storehouses of pent-up anger and volatile emotions some remain trapped in the victim role and act in ways that further their victimization and others are still caught in a cycle of addictive uh, or compulsive patterns. Negative energy can have a, a powerful pull on us, especially if we're struggling to maintain positive energy and balance. It may seem that others who exude negative energy would like to pull us into the darkness with them. We do not have to go. Without judgment, we can decide it's okay to walk away, okay to protect ourselves. We cannot change other people. It does not help others for us to get off balance. We do not lead others into the light by stepping in the darkness with them. Today, God, help me to know that I don't have to allow myself to be pulled into negativity, even around those I love. Help me set boundaries. Help me know it's okay to take care of myself. Um, this is a really, really important uh, meditation and something that I've really learned in the last couple years, you know. Um, I, I say this a lot to people because this is a lesson that I learned. Like, in any situation, it's like, you know, somebody will say to me, well, I have to go do this or I'll have to go do that. And I'll say, you do realize you don't have to do that. Well, what do you mean I don't have to do? Like, yes, I do. Like, I have to go see my sister or I have to go do that. Well, you don't have to. Okay. You can say no. You just, and, and I'm not, and I know like when you're sitting there and whatever thought or thing you have to do in your life that you don't want to do, I mean, there is always the other option. I don't have to do that. Yes, the things will occur from that. You know, like you don't have to pay your taxes, but if you don't pay your taxes, there's going to be a problem with that. You know, you don't have to pay your rent, but if you don't pay your rent, you know, you're probably going to get kicked out of where you live, but you don't have to pay your rent. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's important for us sometimes to know those options. Well, when we break it down to people in our lives, okay, we want to very quickly throw that term toxic out there. Somebody that is toxic in my life, okay, if you think about a, a, something that is toxic to food, for example, okay, that's going to make that food unhealthy to consume and eat, and the purpose of food is to, you know, nourish us, right? So if there's something that's toxic in the food, we wouldn't want to consume it because it wouldn't be healthy for us. Likewise, somebody that is toxic to our life is somebody that is bringing in that negativity. Somebody that is, you know, they're harboring negativity and resentment and anger. Well, I'm not at a point in my life today where I have a lot of anger, negativity, and resentment around me. I, and if I do, if it's, like, for me, I work through that personally on my own. If somebody else has it around them, you know, I'll say to them, like, if it's somebody that I care about. Like, I don't have a lot of people in my life today that are truly negative on a regular basis. I just don't. They kind of, and it's weird, it's not like I just said, I don't want you in my life anymore. But it's like over a period of time, they kind of just started like, I don't know, they're not in my life. I don't know how to say it any other way than that. You know, I just don't have a lot of negative people in my life today um, because I don't live my life 
from that point of view anymore. There was a period where I did. There was a period of uh, my life, and I still do this from time to time. I still fall into it. I'm not a perfect example of anything, of being very complaining and negative and whatever, you know? But I don't like to live there. I don't like to be somebody that's complaining, you know? We have... <laughs> We have only a few minutes here on Earth. We might as well enjoy the minutes that we have instead of complaining about other things that we can't control, you know? So when I have friends around me that are just like constant complaining or complaining or complaining, I, I really, what, one of the things I've learned to do with it is if, you know, if it's my good Judy Tanya, like we drive around at night and get a fountain pop, right? And we both of us complain a little bit about our day, but it's all in jest. And, and then we help each other, you know, work through things too, you know? But if it's somebody that I have had around me and they're just constantly being complaining and negative, one of the things that I have learned in the last couple years is I just don't play into it. You know, I might say once or twice, wow, I feel really bad for what you're going through or what can you do? What can I do for you? Like, what do you need me to do for you? You know, if it continues and it's like two, three, four times and I continue to say that by the fourth or fifth time, I don't say anything at all. Like, I just don't respond when they keep on bringing up the same things over and over and over again. Then, if it's somebody that I truly care about, I'll say, you know, this is starting to become really negative for you. And what can I do to help you get past that, you know? And at that point, it's like, I just stop kind of saying anything. If they don't want help, they don't want help. You know, I don't, I don't know what to say. And, you know, it's like... I have been at a point in my life before where nobody could suggest anything to me because I just wanted to be angry and upset. And that's okay. You have the right to be angry and upset. You have the right to be negative, you know? But when you realize that you're negative and that you're angry and resentful and upset, the person that you're most toxic to is yourself. And I didn't realize that. You know, I didn't realize when I was like so negative all the time that the toxicity that it was mostly affecting my life, you know, like I was the one that had, that people didn't want to be around me. And, you know, I was negative all the time and it was really affecting my perspective on everything. I don't want to live from that point of view anymore. I just don't, you know, I want to be happy, joyous and free. I want that for you guys as well. I want that for my friends. I want that for my family. So what can I, what can I do? How can I be of service in those situations? I can be a beacon of hope. I can be a beacon of light. I can be of service and say, how can I help you? I can try to be happy around those people. I can actively listen to what they're telling me and what they're saying, but I don't have to listen to it 15 times, you know? And I have the right to say, not tonight. I, I don't really want to hear it tonight. I have the right to say that, but I don't think that we think that we do as people, you know? I have the right to say to my friend, hey, I'm really sorry for what you're going through, but this is literally like the 15th time that you've said something to me about it. I'm, I really feel for you, but like, if I can't help you, like, what are we doing here? You know, I have a right to say that to somebody. And, uh, and, and I try to, instead of just walking away from situations, I really try to like, <laughs> pull my shirt down a little bit so <laughs> my arm's not jiggling. Um, I, you know, I really try, you know, to friends of mine to say like, let me help you, you know? And isn't that a friendship where they help me and I, or I help them and they help me back and forth, you know? Instead of just distancing yourself and not being in that person's life anymore. Like, I don't want that, you know? Because thank God, at the time that, you know, I was really, really negative. I had no emotional sobriety. I had no spiritual foundation. And that was where my husband was like, you are negative every single day. Like every single day you wake up, it's the glass is half empty. Every single day. Do you realize like how you're affecting me and everybody around you? And it really was that way. You know, I woke up and it was like, okay, like today I woke up and I was like, God, it's beautiful. Open the windows. It's beautiful, right? Seven, well, this was probably nine, ten years ago. I would have been like, it is so hot in here. We're going to have to turn on the air conditioning. If we turn on the air conditioning, that's going to get expensive. It's not even May yet, and we're turning on the air conditioning, you know? It was always that. It was always something negative. If you find yourself doing that, you're a negative person. Work on it. Do you want to be negative? And listen, so I got my, I took a picture of myself smiling and I gave it to my husband. It's still next to his bed that year for Christmas. And, Cause I asked him, I said, what do you want for Christmas? And he said, I want you to be happy for the whole next year. You know, every day that you wake up, I want you to be smiling. So I took this picture of myself and I said that that's what I was going to do. And it took work. Like it really took work for me to like fight against that negativity and to work through that resentment. It was hard. It was like really, really hard. And that was really like me getting back into the rooms of recovery and really starting to take a look at my part in all of that and how was I affecting the world around me? You know, I think it's real easy for us to point fingers and blame everybody else and blame other situations for why our life is miserable without realizing that we actually have a lot of control over the 
own the misery that we have in our lives and the distancing of it. You don't have to have anybody negative in your life if you don't want to, you know? You don't have to. Just think about that. It's a powerful thought. You don't have to have anybody negative in your life if you don't want to. Anyway, let me know what you think about those meditations. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.